last time on Oz Hour. Okay, so this end of this book was fucking weird because a lot of things happened that didn't make any sense. First, the the trees, they attacked them for a little bit, then they moved on, went to the little Chinatown, met the little glass princess, and broke a cow's arm. They broke someone's arm that had a cow, and then they met the princess and she was all cool then they destroyed half the town because everything's made out of glass and then they got pushed down this hill by these hammerheads and we're like what the fuck and then had to use the hat with all the monkeys to take them where they needed to go they finally met glenda glenda freed the monkeys and then she who she she told her she's like just clap your little feet and then you'll be where you need to be and so that's what she did and then she was back at the farm they were rebuilt new farm new things and that's yeah it there we go hi there and welcome to oz hour the only place where you can hear everything you never knew about the wonderful and strange land of oz that's right with the help of some alcohol we will be discussing each of the 14 books in l frank Baum's wizard of oz series today for the first time we will be discussing book two the marvelous land of oz covering chapters one through six we're your hosts blake stone and wyatt swangham and joining us is our resident oz initiate hannah aguirre Hello. Hello, Hello, Hannah. I'm here. (laughs) Hannah just covered the end of the wonderful Wizard of Oz for us in our last time on segment. Um, Hannah, it took you about 55 seconds to cover it, but you pretty much got everything correct this time. So I'm going to go ahead and call it a win. So congratulations, Hannah. Yay, thank you. Um, Also, if you're interested in hearing Hannah's attempt at summarizing the entirety of our previous book, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, stay tuned after the episode for that treat. Also, before we started recording, we went ahead and whipped up some cocktails. Uh, Wyatt, tell us about your new drink, The Powder of Life. Yes, tonight we are drinking The Powder of Life, which will make more sense as we get into the episode. It is comprised primarily of water and Gatorade powder. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So therein lies the powder. It's also tequila and some blue curacao liquor and some grenadine and it turned out looking a little bit off color but it's almost purple which is what i was going for looks so like a, like a diet coke but like also like a oh, great drink oh it looks like diet coke where the ice melted way too much yeah. Yeah. but also to make up for it i'm wearing a lot of purple today and i didn't even realize yeah she's yeah. blending in where is she <laughs> <laughs> all right guys uh let's take a slurp and get into the story all right worse after it sits oh without further ado the marvelous land of oz by l frank Baum and published in 1904 chapter one tip manufactures a pumpkin head so our story begins in the northern land of oz the country of the gillikins which you know there's four lands of oz Okay. And this is the only one that we actually haven't been to yet. Yes, we've met the Good Witch of the North before, obviously, at the very beginning of the first book. Um, and she hails from the country of the North, but we've never actually set foot there with any characters. So that's where we're starting out in this journey. Yes, yeah. The Good Witch of the North, who gave Dorothy the protective kiss, yeah. is their ruler. Um, and that's about all we know. Um, but just a pop quiz for you. Do you remember the different, like the names of the different people and what their favorite colors are? Oh. Let's start with the east, the first place that Dorothy drops into. The east. Um blue? Yeah, and who That's lives there? That's correct. Oh, oh my gosh. Um who lives there? The Munchkins? Yes. Ah, okay. I know more than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> what about uh the south? Who lives there and what color do they wear? Is that Glenda? Mhm. I'm just going to guess because I'm not 100% sure, but I'm just thinking pink. I'm but- sorry. It's red. Oh, <laughs> a yeah. different a different tint. Do you, yes. <laughs> Do you know what her people are called? Mm. The Quadlings. And what about the West, the where West. the Tin Man rules now? I'm going to say, because I don't really know, um, Purple. It is not. It's yellow. Do you remember who lived there? The Wicked Witch of the West made her the made them her slaves. Oh, um, the the the, the Twinklings. <laughs> <laughs> what are they called? The Winkies. Oh, yeah. the Winkies. And this time we begin our story in the North with the Gillikins, whose the favorite Gilligans. color is purple. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes. 
But yeah, the story begins and basically it just says, yeah, we're in the North Country and we're introduced pretty much immediately to the main character, at least that's what I'm tempted to believe, uh, who is named Tip, which is short for Tipitarius. Yes, his guardian, Mombi, says his full name is Tipitarius, but no one should be expected to say such a long name when <gasps> Tip will do. Okay, that's which, a little rude. Yeah, I think that's a little messed up. It's like mispronouncing like women of color's names. You yeah. Know? Well, and her name is Mombi. Like, uh, okay. why is she judging other people's names? Yeah, so why don't I we mean, call I'm you? I'm gonna B. call you M. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's like an explicit, intentional form of discrim- discrimination and disrespect. And Mombi is strategically misusing Tipitarius's name to other him. Um, but for the purposes of this podcast, we will be calling him Tip. So. Yes, and he, <laughs> he does go by Tip and introduces himself as such. Um, but he has no memory of his parents. He was just raised by this old woman named Mombi, and Mombi has a bad reputation around town yeah, and it's not because she's a street walker <laughs> <laughs> that we know that of. we know of. <laughs> um yeah the gillikins don't really associate with mombi because she indulges in the magical arts um but she's not necessarily a like witch because the good witch of the north has forbidden any other witches from existing in her country oh. uh, so she's the only witch in all of the north um presuming that she still exists mm-hmm. um and so mombi's basically like a sorceress or a wizardress but not a witch so she like practices magic illegally yes illegally yes <gasps> wow but she's not like a witch witch and she certainly she wouldn't I mean, be called that by other people yeah, yeah other people would just be like oh yeah she does like illegal magic shit but like and they're like afraid of her they like really are like i guess respectful but in the same way that you'd respect someone you were afraid of you know yeah. like you're just like intimidated yes yes she's intimidating because they don't fuck with magic they're like we got the good witch of the north she does her magic and she's a witch and that's great they don't need anything else. Mombi, though, she's there okay, doing her magic. They don't have to stay in their place. Stay in your yeah. lane. Yeah. yeah. So Tip lives with Mombi, and he's essentially Mombi's like enslaved child laborer. Yeah. Uh, he carries wood from the shed to the house. He works in the cornfields, feeds the pigs, um, and he, he also feeds the four horned cow, which seems like it just needs to be mentioned for no reason other than L. Frank Baum made it up. He feeds it and milks it, which (gasps) I was a little surprised by because I didn't realize that female cows had horns, but I looked it up and dairy cows and cattle cows of the female variety can both have horns. Interesting. Um, Interesting. I wonder what that milk tastes like. Is it um, sweet? Four times the flavor i guess yeah. it's like over well, whole milk oh <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> yeah it's, it's be- 110 beyond milk. whole yeah ew <laughs> butter um but yeah she treats uh, mombi treats tip pretty poorly and she just has him do all the stuff around the farm which i think is kind of an interesting parallel to dorothy because in the first book we start with like this girl who we don't know anything about her parents she's being raised by these two really nice old people but she does a bunch of work on a farm and she's super strong and then we start this book with tip who lives in oz like works doesn't know anything about his parents works under this old woman who is terrible and then he does all the chores but obviously dorothy and him it's like a mirror image almost but it's just an interesting thought experiment to start on too i didn't even think about that um, Tip is also like really sneaky and mischievous. Yeah. Uh, he plays when he should be working. Well, yeah. by Mombi standards, should be working, but um, and he hates Mombi. Like, mm-hmm. like I like like we said, everyone else is like afraid of her and like respectful, but he's just like he doesn't give a fuck. He yeah, he plays in the fields. Yeah, he just like he just rushes to do the actual like, chores at night. He's honestly mm-hmm. kind of a little shit. Why are you stealing birds' eggs? Why are you chasing rabbits? Why are you digging out gophers' I do feel holes? Bad for the animals he's in this kind farm. of a piece of shit. Yeah, that's I kind like of serial killer vibes. I almost feel bad, except like Mombi is terrible and like starves him, and I'm. Like maybe he's going to get eggs for food. The rabbits he's probably chasing for fun. The gophers I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, he's also he's also an unknowable age. How old is Tip? Oh, I don't know. I mean, as we go, on, I think he's older than Dorothy. Like as we go on, I think we'll notice he seems fairly old, maybe in the double digits. I would think like twelve, maybe maybe thirteen, meh, twelve. But at any rate, though, he plays around all day. He doesn't do it. Well, he does his chores at the end of the day, but he's just he's skating by basically like he's living this like awful life under Mombi and he's just doing what he has to do to keep living. So one thing is that Tip like 
absolutely hates Mombi and he has no problem hiding it at all. Um, and the book says that indeed he sometimes showed less respect for the old w- woman than he should have done, considering she was his guardian, which I kind of had an issue with mm. because she's his guardian, but she's also like his tormentor. Yeah. Well, she's not caring for a, him. She's yeah. not even his guardian. I mean, a guardian's not a provider. She's in charge of him, I guess, for some reason. I don't know who yeah. put her in charge yeah, of him. Because he's 12. Yeah. Actually, it's kind of ambiguous because, yeah, when did she get charge of him? Well, well he we doesn't don't know. remember, so we might yeah. learn at some point. Mm. Yeah. But. I don't know. I mean, on Oz Hour, we believe that respect is earned, not just given. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but one thing that Tip definitely does is he disrespects Mombi. And he likes to play tricks on her, which we will learn more about. But specifically, one day, and I don't know what even prompted him to do this. Oh, there's these giant pumpkins that he has to pick to feed the four-horned cow uh, in the winter. So it's just like a big pumpkin. I don't know how big. Not like giant, but like... Bigger than a normal pumpkin. I think, I mean, I think they're pretty huge considering the project that he does with it. Yeah. Well, so basically, he gets this pumpkin out of the field and he decides that he's going to scare Mommy with it. So he carves it into a, well, it's, he carves it into a jack o' lantern, but he doesn't really know how he's supposed to do it because he doesn't have a lot of friends. He thinks it's called a jack lantern. And so he doesn't carve it out. He literally just like, he doesn't like scoop the guts out. He just cuts two. He, <laughs> I actually have the quote. With the point of his knife, he made two round eyes, a three-cornered nose, which is a triangle, and a mouth shaped like a new moon. So all that to say, it's just a normal pumpkin. He he carved a pumpkin, yeah, but he didn't but scoop the guts. Since he doesn't have any friends to play with, he doesn't know that you're supposed to scoop it out and put a yeah. candle in it. Oh my uh, he should have looked on TikTok or something. And like, and why he did they seen. just like leave that detail? Why didn't they just say that he just carved a pumpkin? It, why why does it have to be he didn't scoop the guts out? Well, we'll find actually later in the book. I'm pretty sure that becomes relevant. Okay. Um, it's really amazing. But I don't know why he does his character, the type of person he is. Yeah, he's no, just I isolated. Mean, right now it's negative. Negligence. I mean, it, it, he didn't do it for a purpose. It was he didn't know. Yeah, he just didn't, he just know. didn't know. And I guess if you just cut oh, that makes me upset for some reason. I don't. If know If you why. cut the face out of a pumpkin though, without scooping it, and then you looked at it, wouldn't it just look orange? Like how it would be as distinct well, as it was supposed to be. I mean, it's not. I guess from up close, yeah, it would just tell. look stringy. Ugh, how much I guess. pulp is in it? Um, uh, anyway, but he decides <laughs> that he's going to build an entire body for it so that he can stand it up and scare Mombi with it, which. Like, don't get me wrong. I love carving a pumpkin every year. It's like one of my favorite traditions. We all always like have a big night with it every year. I always have high hopes for my pumpkin. And I'm always like, I'm going to do like such a cool design this year. And I get so bored and tired of it like a quarter of the way through. Yeah. And this kid is building a body for his pumpkin. Oh my God. Is it just because he didn't have to gut and clean it or something? Because I don't Cause know. Because it's quick. Because that's the worst part. <laughs> that's yeah. the worst part. <laughs> that is the worst part. And that's then you're exhausted. True. And then all of a sudden, now you have to make this fucking now you have to face. Make art. Yeah. Uh, and then you have to cook whole the thing. seeds, which yeah. is a whole other thing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Well, now we, I feel like we can never complain again. Because this kid goes all out. Yeah, yeah, honestly, I get mad when we carve pumpkins. <laughs> I'm never in a good mood. That's why you have to be like Charlie and you just have to set the bar really low and then meet that expectation. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Last time I tried making Aang from Avatar. Oh, and it like, oh, caved in. It caved I think in. It did cave in, yeah. yeah. So that was it upsetting. Was, it was believable, though, until the cave in. It just looked like a big arrow. <laughs> was, yeah, by then it was just a down arrow. Well, uh, um, <laughs> But so then, I mean, Tip says to himself with a laugh that once he sets up this pumpkin man to scare Mombi with, she'll squeal louder than the brown pig does when I pull her tail. Which is fucked up. And shivel with fright worse than I did last year when I had the ague. Which, yeah. Why are you pulling pig's tails? I'm sorry. I'm not victim blaming. I know he has a lot of drama. Yeah. He has a lot of pent up anger. Like, why bring the animals into it? Yeah. But, Hannah, this is actually a good opportunity for some guest trivia. Tip says that he hopes that she shivers more than he did when he had the ague. What is the ague? Oh, God. This is a multiple choice, though. It's multiple choice. Oh, thank God. A, yellow fever. B, chicken pox. C, malaria. Or D, pneumonia. The ague. I'm going to say pneumonia because it just sounds like possibly coughing. The ague. Mm. Ague. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's I thought pneumonia too. To be honest, that was my first thought. But we looked it up, and it is 
C malaria. Uh, um, no, that was the that. original English name. Yeah, for that's they they call malaria that now and like well not now because no one says Do that. They just but not like, have the words to say anything else. I don't know why they called it that. Actually, I suppose probably the disease was discovered by a specific person and like categorized and named uh, for that person or their circumstances. That makes and prior to that, it's called the ague. It's interesting that malaria exists in Oz. It is. Yeah, <laughs> it's a mosquito-borne bacteria. Or what virus? Like probably virus. But yeah, are, there even mosquitoes? are there mosquitoes well, in there Oz? Are bees. Oh, but they're in the. Oh, that's true. So, oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of animals. Of maybe course, they, they have, an have a Nile. They have a king of the mosquitoes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The king of the mosquitoes gives you the ague. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But at any rate, though, good um, job on that, even yeah. though you didn't get it. <laughs> so Tip has plenty of time to construct his pumpkin man because Mombi's not going to be back for two days. You want to know why? Why? She went to town to buy groceries. Yeah. <laughs> But they are so isolated. And this should help paint the picture of Tip because, like, yeah, he didn't have playmates. He doesn't have access to anybody. Like, it's just it's just him and Mombi on this farm two miles away from groceries and God knows what else, which is just insane. And also, she's leaving there for two days. I mean, that seems kind of irresponsible with a boy that can barely do his daily chores. I don't know. And he's alone in the middle of nowhere with his abuser. Oh, Tip. <laughs> no. Oh, my boy. But one good thing about her being gone for two days is, number one, that's probably just good for him. I'm sure he likes her being gone. Stress free. But also it gives plenty of time for him to make a full functioning human body from wood. So he spends the entire day building the pumpkin head man. He goes off. Oh, yeah. God. He does it all day he until he gets it... fixated on things, doesn't he? He yeah, does. You know, he's a he's a he's a wanderer. He's yeah. a dreamer. He dreams. Yeah, what's a sleep. sign? What's a sign? Does anyone know? Uh I don't believe in that, so I don't know any of them. Uh, I don't either. <laughs> I just know that I'm a cancer and I can be emotional. <laughs> wow, that describes everyone. <laughs> That's a good way to justify your behaviors. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, maybe so. he's a cancer too because he goes off. <laughs> it, it's cr- like he go he chops down trees and saplings. He oh scrapes God. the bark off of a tree, makes it into a cylinder as the body. He makes pegs to create working joints so that this thing can walk. And for what purpose? I don't know. To scare Mombi uh, once. Yes, yeah. It's like a marionette and he's just going in yeah, it's just over the top and it's just crazy. Um oh, and then yeah, and then he finally attaches the he- well, he attaches a wooden spike to the top of the body so that when the pumpkin is put on it, it can turn left and right and look around. Which I guess if you're gonna scare Mombi, you want it to be good and look right and so it's posable, but Yeah. So the joints are posable and it's on a swivel head. And then Tip decides he needs to get him dressed. So yeah. he grabs him some purple trousers, a red shirt, and a pink vest, which was dotted with white spots, to which I say, I think I did high school theater with that guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, all that came from Mombi's wardrobe. Yeah. Like, I imagine Mombi wearing a black cloak and a bonnet. And so hearing no, that, I'm like, oh, different. is she <laughs> well, <laughs> summer boy? The book says that he gets that from her chest of like keepsakes and treasures so oh. maybe those are the clothing of people she's done things to or done away with oh, oh. like when serial killers put like everybody's id in an envelope under their floorboard right, exactly like that yikes wow well that's what he dressed him though but as though now that he's <laughs> dressed and looking good and his joints are posable tip gives him the best name that he can think of yeah he wants to honor him and you know what he names him what? Jack, Jack Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead. <gasps> yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um Let's breathtaking. Some Tim Burton shit. <laughs> yeah, seriously though, yeah. And I kind of especially with all the joints, uh, that makes sense. So that is the end of the first chapter, which in contrast to the first book is insanely packed with information the first book or the first chapter of the first book is literally a page and dorothy's transported to oz in it but it's just like so sudden but this definitely started out on a different foot yeah. which i think is interesting oh frank Baum took like a beginner's writing course between the two books or something yeah and Ride-ish three years course. yeah <laughs> i also but, like that we start in oz yeah it's a lot different isn't it mm-hmm. um, yeah. for all the questions you have at the end of the first book where you're like well what's it like for those people well now we're going to find the fuck out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're going to really get a slice of life. But that was chapter one titled Tip Manufactures a Pumpkin Head. And Blake, what would you call that chapter if pressed? Two days to groceries. That's a good. That's actually really good. 
Chapter 2, The Marvelous Powder of Life. So this chapter starts us at the following morning, and this is when the day that Mombi is supposed to return from her two-day grocery journey. Yeah, and Tip decides that the best place to set up Jack Pumpkinhead would be at the bend in the road a little way down from the house. Yeah, And so here is where, of course, the joints come into action. So he basically stands behind Jack Pumpkinhead and uses his legs to bend Jack's knee joints and he just pushes him along and basically just walks him. It's super weird. Yeah. I don't know why he there's gotta be a wheelbarrow or a hay cart or something yeah. he could have put him in and carry or like, like dragged him. Oh man, this thing is way too awkward and heavy to carry. Instead I'll stand behind it and simulate walking. And yeah. create joints so it can bend its knee and <laughs> yeah. walk. So bizarre. And then he breaks its arm off. Ah. But he repairs it when he gets it to its place. Yeah. So I mean, it's this thing isn't... <laughs> when he gets down there, Jack's arm is removed and his head is fully turned around. Oh, oh my God. Right. It, it wasn't a graceful walk. I mean, the no. thing's not real. Yeah, exactly. It it's just like... makes me feel weird because I feel like it's very real right now. I'm picturing an AI. Ew, but he's like a, he's like waiting. He's seeing everything, yeah, yeah, but yeah. he hasn't been like awoken. Haley <laughs> Joel Osment is just curled up in the inside the pumpkin, and he's like, mm, I'm a oh, real boy. God. See, I was imagining Bicentennial Man, but uh, same, same. Yeah, it is kind of serving Bicentennial Man uh, more, because when Tip grows up, he's going to marry Jack Pumpkinhead. He might, although that might be strange. He's giving um, a little Westworld for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, he gets him to the bend in the road, he repairs him, and he sets him up in the corner of the bend. And... Uh, well, L. Frank Baum remarks that he looks so real that he looks like a normal Gillikin farmer from afar. Like, from a distance, he just looks like a guy standing in a field. But mm -hmm. then up close, when you see the pumpkin head and his strange proportions and wooden body and outfit, he's actually pretty startling. Which, if I came around the corner, looked up, and there was a, what I would presume to be, a nine-foot-tall pumpkin-headed man wearing, what, purple pants, a red shirt, and a spotted polka yeah vest. polka dot vest i would i would scream i, I wouldn't would, like that i'd just be like, I like oh, it's, some, it's some street tramp on my property uh, yeah <laughs> shoo um. shoo get out of here <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tip sets jack pumpkin head up i almost said skellington um oh, no. tip I sets don't. jack pumpkin head up well with enough time for mommy to arrive because she won't be expected home for several more hours so he goes down to the valley below the farmhouse and picks nuts yeah because as a reminder he needs to feed himself he's very hungry and so he's getting his nuts i wonder what kind of nuts in a field peanuts i guess he could go to a walnut tree but anyway mombi ends up coming home early and she is in a hurry and i actually have a quote for the reason why she was in a hurry which is interesting and i'll probably editorialize it a little bit as i go so look it up if you want the whole quote but she had met a crooked wizard who resided in a lonely cave in the mountains and had traded several important secrets of magic with him, having in this way secured three new recipes, four magical powders, maybe the powder of life included, and a selection of herbs of wondrous power and potency she hauled home as fast as she could because she wanted to try out the new ship. So she's racing home. I guess when it says hobbling, I wonder if she uses a cane. Oh, she does use a cane. I picture she her with a cane. Well, she tries to use the cane in just a moment, actually. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so she's in such a hurry. That when she sees Jack on the road, she just nods and she says, good evening, sir. So she notices that the person that she said good evening, sir, to doesn't move or reply. So she takes a closer look and discovers that he's actually a pumpkin man made of wood. Yeah. And at this point, she's like next to him. Like she sees him from afar. She's like, oh, it's a farmer. She gets closer. She's I imagine her head's down. She's looking at the road. She's unstable. Good evening, sir. And then she gets a little so closer. Yeah. Looks so up like life hunched over her. Yeah. Just like so she screams like, you know, and then she but she immediately realizes when she like sees what it is. She's like, this is one of t one of tips tricks he set this up and she vowed to beat him black and blue for it yeah and she's about to take a whack at the pumpkin yeah oh she God. like raises uh, her cane up. anger issues uh, yeah she, she has some abuse issues she's yeah she is so evil yeah but she decides you know what? i'm not gonna destroy jack instead i'm gonna test out one of my new powders on him yeah so she pulls out yes <laughs> one of her new powders she says that she, it's a good chance to use one of the powders because she'd given the wizard she met a bunch of fake shit she gave him fake secrets fake magic stuff so because she didn't want to give him her stuff and then she was like i just want to see if he gave me real stuff or if it's all tricks so already we're getting a slice of like okay mommy is evil and she's a trickster and, and she's, she's gonna be abusive yeah and she's smart which is also scary yeah scary 
Um, but she starts rifling through her basket and Tip comes up and notices that Mombi's home early. And at first he's really disappointed that she doesn't seem frightened by a Jack Pumpkinhead. But uh, then he's interested in what she's doing standing so close to him. So he hides behind a hedge and watches. Yeah. So she finally in her basket finds this old pepper shaker, which I imagine ha- being like the type with a little like tin handle on it and a big P on the side. But well, yeah, well, it says it's an old pepper box box. So I think it's okay. literally like a paper box with a little spout. Oh, on it. OK. Well, it's labeled either way. Powder of life in pencil in pencil. Yeah. In lead pencil. So shoddily written. So I don't blame her for testing that one out because it's like, <laughs> is this real? But she does a incantation. And as we know, L. Frank Baum loves some interesting incantations. He sure does. And yeah. Well, actually, let's demonstrate it. But real quick, I want to make sure because I think I don't know yet, but I think this is going to come back up later in the story. And she does point out that the stingy wizard didn't give her very much of it. And she thinks she has enough for three or four doses. Mm. So Mombi sprinkles Jack Pumpkinhead with the powder and does this incantation. We are Tiach Piach and when she does the first one, she does her little finger, then her right thumb, then both thumbs. Yeah, she does a lot of hand stuff in the air. But all of a sudden, Jack Pumpkinhead steps back a pace at this. And he's like startled. And he's like, don't yell at me like that. Like, do you think I'm deaf? Uh- and <laughs> Mombi just starts dancing around him with, fr- quote, frantic delight. And she's like, he's alive. Yeah. He's alive. <laughs> he's alive. Yeah. 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 She says, he lives, he lives. Oh, he lives. That's right. <laughs> and then during this, Tips, so Tip sees all this and it scares the fuck out of him. He's like, I need to get out of here. Like, I'm so freaked out. But then he looks up and he sees Jack Pumpkinhead uh, and his smiling face and how stupid he looks just like smiling during this like weird, crazy scene. And he starts to laugh. He just can't help it. He's like, oh, I love that face. And he just starts laughing. And then Mommy's like, hey. Hey, you come down here. Are you trying to laugh at me? <laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah. There's so much like, happening. No, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at that thing. Look how ridiculous it looks. And Jack's basically like, hey, don't say that I look funny. Which sparks Mombi to be like, wait, what do you know? Yeah, which is like, a really interesting question. <laughs> and something that I think we would all like to have asked the Scarecrow, another yeah, parallel. It's, it's giving me big Scarecrow vibes yeah, right now. Which is like, okay, yeah, like, what do you, like, how are you here? And you're just like, knowing shit like it's crazy but i mean i don't know do you have a consciousness he tells her using yeah he tells her he isn't sure but i like what he says he says it'll take him time to discover whether he's tremendously wise or tremendously foolish which like wyatt just said parallel to the scarecrow i really appreciate that jack is willing to take that time to figure out what he is because the scarecrow was like oh no brains just strong i'm so sad i'm dumb when he had all the ideas yeah now jack is clearly showing intelligence and enough intelligence to say I'm going to wait to answer that question because I don't know yet. Well, and he even says, like, I think I know a lot, but, like, I'm not aware of enough like, yet to have, even know. I don't so, have the like, context of what well, a law is, but yeah. I think I know More quite mature a bit. after one day compared yes. to three days for the scarecrow. After yeah. five minutes. After, yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> not even a day. Yeah. But so mommy is satisfied with that, basically. She's like, oh, okay, cool. And so she's like okay, I don't know what I'm going to do with you yet, but you're coming home with me. So, and Tip, so are you. (laughs) And so they go back to the farm or whatever, and she locks Jack in the stable. She, like, puts him in the stable, closes the door, locks him from the outside, and she's like, okay, that's taken care of. Or now that he's, like, put away, like, I have something to do with Tip. And Tip is freaked out. Yeah, she basically tells him it's time for his punishment and takes him into the house. And, like, he's super uneasy because he, quote, knew Mombi had a bad and revengeful heart and would not hesitate to do any evil thing. Yeah. So Um, so, she's going to go off the rails. Yeah. Yeah. They go inside. Without a word, really, she makes him light candles and start a fire in the hearth while she sits down for her supper. Which is just bread and cheese, by the way. Yeah. But also, interestingly, they when they enter the house, they're like, oh, it's a round, dome-shaped house, just like all farmhouses in Oz. So those round, domed houses outside the Emerald City and like in the Munchkin Land, like, all the houses are dome-shaped, which is interesting. I don't really fully know how to interpret yeah, that. That's just how their architecture how they be popping. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Um, but yeah, so mom is eating, though, and Tip is like, hey, like, I'm hungry, too. Like, can I have any? And she was like no you can't have any he's like well i'm hungry and she's like 
you won't be hungry for long. How scary is that? Yeah. Oh, so you're going to kill me. <laughs> yes. So this is the last day I'm on Earth. Yeah. And then <laughs> without even saying anything, Bombi rises and she pours equal parts of vinegar and milk into a black kettle, which, by the way, I think would make it curdle and make it like a cottage cheese. Just my opinion. Um, and then she adds a bunch of powder and herbs and she has like this little recipe she's consulting. Yeah, she's like, looking at this little yellow piece of paper. Like, which, hmm, I what, imagine, what goes in here next? <laughs> I imagine it being like a legal pad. Like she just like wrote it down. Yeah. And she like tore it off and she's like by the candle looking at it. So uh, all the while Tip is just sitting there silently eating the nuts from his pockets that he picked earlier when yeah, he thought she was going to be back later. Because he's uh, fucking hungry. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she starts following the recipe and Tip asks her what it's for, and she tells him, for you. Then an hour passes without them like saying anything, and she keeps cooking, and he just keeps sitting there, which He's must have just been there. the scariest fucking there. Yeah, But you have to wonder how many times something like this has happened. Yeah, like but, how much is he well, used to this? Well, yeah. how many times has he played a prank on a very dangerous woman? Yeah. Because she seems she's like she's fucking break. sick of him. Yeah, who's fed <laughs> up first? So yeah. Tip asks Mombi... Uh, what that's going to do to him when she makes him drink it. And she tells him that if it works, it will turn him into a marble statue. And and yeah, because Tip is like, okay, what the fuck? Like, what, th- like what's the point of that? Like, who's going to do all of your chores? Like, I don't want to be a statue. And she's like, I'll have the pumpkin head do the work instead. It doesn't even oh, matter. So she already has a plan. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, oh, well, like, just turn me into a goat or a chicken. And then you can, like, y- you know, you you can use me in that way. And Mombi is like, well, actually, I'm going to plant a flower garden. And I'm going to put the marble statue of you in it as an ornament. So, yeah. Actually, that's it. And he's like crying. He's like sobbing. He's like, I don't want to be a statue. I want to be a boy. I want to live my life. I don't want to live my life as a statue in a garden, which I found really interesting because when she said that she was going to make him into a statue, I did not hear. I didn't read that as, oh, he's going to be living inside of a statue. <laughs> well, like his gonna, soul is going to yeah, be in he's there. He's still going to be yeah. alive. He's just going to be a statue. It's like the white witch from Narnia. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, and also, it's kind of an interesting parallel because, like, what's Jack's Jack Pumpkinhead other than just, like, an inanimate bunch of stuff that was given, like, sentient life? And then now it's like, well, so he came from nothing and now is conscious, but he still has all this knowledge. So it's like, does that mean that when Tip is turned into a statue that all of his knowledge and identity still continues but as a statue like it's it's just an interesting thought experiment um and horrifying frankly it yeah, is Tip very just scary sits there watching crickets and grasshoppers for the rest of his life oh god um yeah. but it is interesting how much like stock they're putting in Jack Pumpkinhead right off the bat. She's like, oh, yeah, he's just going to do all of your chores. Duh. They don't know anything about this powder. They don't know. No. She li- was literally testing the powder on Jack Pumpkinhead. She really doesn't want to just give it a couple of days to and see if he's like, yeah, ready to get rid of this kid. She's like, I'm over it. <laughs> no <laughs> more patience. No matter what that Jack Pumpkinhead turns into, it's better than this kid. No. <laughs> but the concoction that she made in the kettle has to cool overnight before it's ready so mommy's just like all right everyone we're going to bed and then she goes to her room and and oh and she promises first thing in the morning i'll wake you up and i'll make you a statue right away yeah and she takes the kettle into her room with her and locks herself and the kettle in her bedroom i hate her i hate her and you know tip just sat up watching the embers all night um just sitting there and that's how that chapter ends. That being chapter two, the marvelous powder of life. And Blake, Ew. what would you rename that chapter? The quietest, scariest hour. Oh, Ugh. oh, descriptive. This is a horror movie or a horror book. It is. This is yeah, a twenty four. Better get their hands on this. They better. <laughs> chapter three, the flight of the fugitives. So basically, Tip is sitting there watching the flames or the embers in the fireplace i and he says basically fuck that and yeah decides to run away i would like to say the first yes. line of this chapter which is it's a two-word sentence it's the first line it just says tip reflected and <laughs> i it's like jesus wept <laughs> yes, exactly and very it's very like, powerful yeah and he was just thinking i'm very rebellious i'm thinking like he's just thinking like he, he felt rebellious because he's like i don't want to do what mombi says i'm not going to bed i'm not going to be a statue that's not how i want to do it so he waits till mombi is snoring and then he takes his leave of the house but he gets some he does stop to get some bread and cheese because he's not an idiot 
Yeah, so he goes to get the bread out of the cupboard, and since Mombi just went grocery shopping, he needs to get the cheese out of the basket that she brought home with her uh, from town. So while he's going through the basket to get the cheese, he finds the pepper box of the powder of life. Yeah. Mm. And he thinks that he would may as well take this with him, or Mombi will be using it to make more mischief with, mm. which let's please not forget that we're even in this situation because of Tip's constant mischief. But he does take it, which I think is, well, it is a good thing, as we'll find out. But yeah. it's a good thing because Mombi is evil. You just never and know. He's running off into a whole new world. Yeah. Take everything that you can. So Tip sneaks out, and he's really happy to get away, for he never did like that old woman. And he wonders how he came to live with her. So he has no memory of his parents, and he has no memory of why he even lives with Mombi. Yeah, and he's like, it's just, he's basically just going insane, thinking like, I can't believe I was trapped here that long. Like, why am I even here? Why was I here that whole time? So he's just like sneaking out. He's fucking glad to be leaving. He's had this whole revelation, but then he realizes something he left behind. Now he realizes that Jack technically belongs to him. Mombi's the one who gave him life, but Tip's the one who built him. So he decides Jack Pumpkinhead is his property. So he's going to turn around and go back and get yeah. him from the stalls. And I also like to think, and it might've said in the text, but my takeaway also was like, Tip's been enslaved by her for years, who knows? And he's like, fuck, I can't just leave Jack Pumpkinhead to like rot with her and like be enslaved. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna go get him. So he retraces his steps and he's like, hey, come with me. And Jack's like, where to? And Tip's like, I don't know. Just come on. He's like, ah, okay, fine. Um, and it's kind of cute because while <laughs> while well, it's they're basically father and son. Oh, yes, oh, we'll they give into certainly that. are. Yeah. Uh that is also funny because Jack, while they're walking, like at first his joints are bending like backwards and like okay. he's doing some, he's having some weird shit. I put that in my notes and then read, I wrote scarecrow body horror. Yeah. Because <laughs> his knees are like bending the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. It's pumpkin body. Horror. It's pumpkin, <laughs> pumpkin body horror. <laughs> yes, it really is. And he's like, but yeah, but then after a little bit though, he's like, oh, this is kind of hard. So he just kind of slows down, gets comfortable and he just figures out, he learns to walk and it's like, oh, daddy taught him how to walk. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, he did actually teach him how to walk, I guess, if he remembers what happened I mean, before yeah, he was alive. Jack is really like, oh, you're right. He literally taught him how to walk before yeah. he was sentient. You better cut that out. I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, so they take multiple turns as they walk so that they can't be followed. And by morning, it doesn't say how far away they went, but they are now safely far away to where they're not concerned about Mombi pursuing them. Yeah. And they sit down and Tip decides to eat and Jack refuses to eat. And he says, oh, like, I just don't think I'm really made of the same stuff as you are. And Tip is like, yeah, I know you're not. I made you. <laughs> yeah. To which Jack's response is really interesting. He says, why, then you must be my creator, my parent, my father. And Tip's like, yeah, basically, yeah, like I'm your, let's say maybe inventor. Like, but, but Jack is just like, by that. Jack is like, you're my daddy. He literally, ah, he looks ah. at his body and he's like, you did a good job. You're my dad now. <laughs> and like, the book even says like Jack just like keeps calling Tip father and it like makes Tip a little uncomfortable and it's weird, but he also like kind of loves it, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's convenient, certainly, because he's, it, he is infinitely obedient to tip and he doesn't know anything but tips also good and but like this is giving me like frankenstein vibes yeah. yes actually mm -hmm. i have a reference to that later in my notes somewhere i don't remember where so but we'll get there they start walking again and tip realizes that like they he thinks that they're heading south so sooner or later they'll come to the emerald city yeah and then we get this whole interlude, which is basically a geography and cultural history lesson. Tip says how the Emerald City was built by the Wizard of Oz. Everything is green. Everything in the north is purple. We knew that, right? Like, mm -hmm. that's their color. But did you know that the trees are purple? The houses are purple. The fences are purple. The mud is purple. The oh. roads are purple. The grass is purple. Everything I is think, purple. I think that that's an inconsistency from the previous book or that he didn't explain it well in the previous book. Yeah. yeah. Because that was a genuine shock to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, so everything has to be that color. And like, does is that their mean, skin purple? Is tip purple? Because I wasn't thinking of the, what is it? The munchkins. Yeah. As, oh, yeah. I just thought they wore blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's, I think that's the impression that anyone would get from those books. I didn't think that everything around them was yeah. blue. Yeah. Like I'm the, not picturing everything the being dirt blue. and it's, the grass. 
grind. It's kind of interesting. I like the idea of like everything being just like shades of purple, you know? So when they go into a new part of town, does it completely cut off into the next color or does it fade away into the new color? We'll get there. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, very soon. That's things Uh, I like to know. But But yeah, he tells him that in the, uh, Tip tells Jack that in the Emerald City, everything's green, just like everything's yellow in the West where the Tin Woodman rules. So we know for a fact that this book takes place after the first book yeah because the tin woodman is ruling in the west and the scarecrow is ruling in the yeah. jack in the emerald city asks for some clarification tip explains to him that the tin woodman helped dorothy defeat the wicked witch of the west and that the winkies were so happy and asked him to rule over them yeah know your history please yeah. <laughs> thank it's, you it's a little bit like exposition where it's like yeah like okay we know all of this stuff happened like in the last book because we're adults that just read it but it's been three years since the original novel was published so mm. some background makes sense yeah. but there we are love a, a recap yeah, there are a couple things uh, that I think are interesting, and this will play into a theory that I have overarching about the relationship between the Scarecrow and the Tin Woodman, which really didn't come to the forefront of our discussion in the first book, but I do think that they have a romantic love interest with each other, or at least a fraternity of, or what, a, a brotherhood of man thing going on. I don't know. One thing that Tip says is, oh, well, there's also the Tin Woodman, and Jack is like, who's that? And he was like, she's another friend of Dorothy's. You know, a friend of Dorothy. Just, you know, a word people use to describe people who are gay. Um, nowadays. Nowadays. It, well, it didn't exist not back even then. Nowadays, but we yeah. don't know when it happened. But another interesting thing is that when they're like, oh, yeah, let's go to the Emerald City to see the Scarecrow. Um, or the, the Scarecrow lives in the Emerald City is what Tip says. And Jack says, are we going to see this queer king? Come on, guys. Come Ooh. on. Everyone on board the train. Come on. Yeah. We're all getting on. We're all yeah, going to hop on the train that goes to the YMCA. <laughs> yes. I actually just read the Wikipedia article for the village people. Very interesting history. But they saying YMCA. Uh, but Tip is like, oh, yeah. So like, why don't we just go there? And Jack is like, yeah, let's go, daddy. Let's go. We're ready. He, he calls him father in the book. But I can't <laughs> read daddy. it and not think daddy. It's daddy. Yeah, because there's something weird. Um, yeah, that's what Wyatt calls his own dad. So it's just kind of like muscle memory for him. Ever since I was 12. <laughs> <laughs> so 12 old. and older. Yeah. <laughs> 12 and older. That's the only time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that is the end of chapter three, which is titled The Flight of the fugitives and blake what would you name that chapter let's go daddy Uh, yes that's (laughs) the first right answer we've got (laughs) chapter four tip makes an experiment of magic so tip asks jack if he's tired and jack's like no but that i think my wooden joints are going to wear out if i keep using them like this which is some pumpkin body horror because yeah jack is like i don't think i can really get tired but i do think these joints are going to be done and tip is like no that seems completely accurate so what did you do you replace the joints well tip takes a break to figure out how to make jack's joints stronger and he takes a seat down on a wooden sawhorse you know like what a sawhorse is right no we'll show you okay oh yeah i know exactly what you're talking about so jack uh (laughs) also tries to join him on the sawhorse uh, but he's unable to because his joints are so rickety. He has a really hard time sitting down. So they decided it'd be best if he stayed standing all the time. Yeah. He just like fully collapsed actually, <laughs> but he's like unfazed. He's like, okay, whatever. But then he like kind of looks up and he's like, tip, like, what are you sitting on? And tip is like, oh, I'm sitting on a horse. He explains that hor- there are two types of horses. Living horses have tails and four legs and mouths and they prance and trot around and they eat oats. Um, Okay, that's Which the are... only type of horse I know. <laughs> <laughs> Personally. Uh, Jack points out that the saw horse, like a real horse, does have four legs and a tail because there's a little branch sticking out of the end. And he has these two weird little knot, like wooden knots in the wood that look like two eyes. And there's a little slice in the face that looks like a mouth. So Tip's like, they're oh, really, wow. They're reading a lot yeah. into it. Tip's like, what it, a horrible example for me to <laughs> call a horse. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's horrifying. Conf- that's confusing. And it's also interesting. It's horsifying. Uh, because, <laughs> like, but it's also interesting because, like, 
I'm imagining like a plastic sawhorse, but this sawhorse is just made of wood. It's just wood. Yeah, plastic so it's doesn't probably, exist. It's, it's 1903. Longer. It's like a log. And yeah. To like it's, support. Yeah. It's basically a log okay. stood up with sticks and with this weird face on it. After Jack is like, well, that looks exactly like a horse. Tip is like, oh, well, it's not alive. It's just made of wood. And Jack is like, yeah, so am I. And at that point, they realize they can make the sawhorse live. Yeah. So why are uh, they trying to make everything come alive? <laughs> yeah, see, like just but, leave the inanimate objects as yeah. that, leave and let's stop it. giving things con like souls. Yeah, and, things. and Tip kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Tip took I'm away. Tip took the powder of life from Mombi so that she couldn't be mischievous, and then he's going and bringing a sawhorse okay. to life. Uh, now, he doesn't he, know. He is going to bring the sawhorse to life to he's serve a, a purpose. It's in order to carry Jack so that Jack isn't wearing out his joints. So it's all. I mean, it's all in the right. It's in the name of science or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, it's a it's a crazy thing to do. It is a crazy like like Plan B. Yeah, yeah. It also but brings the plan question. A. <laughs> yeah, that, yes. That their first idea was let's bring this sawhorse to life to carry Jack. But it just kind of brings to mind like, okay, um, so Jack's joints are wearing out. What's gonna happen to the sawhorse's joints or whatever it has? Like. Aren't its joints going to wear out? Like, is it worse? Yeah, is it you're better? giving thing, these things like feelings and yeah, yeah. So it's, each we just have to find just more out. things to take care of. It's the same thing with Dorothy, honestly. She just collects people. She, she collects, collects them. She collects them, and then she expects them. <laughs> <laughs> collects and expects mm -mm. like your baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was so good. Tip reads the spell off the box and he does the first move of the spell, which is, you know, left pinky up as you say, we are. And, uh, and Jack is like, what, what does that mean? And Tip's like, I don't know. No, yeah, um, I just I have to do. Oh it. Oh my god, I. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like Tip's getting on my last nerve. Yeah, he's playing with things. He has no idea <laughs> what the effect is. I'm just is. sick of him. Like that's enough. So um, then Tip does the second part of the spell, and Jack's like, "Oh, so what does that mean?" And Tip's like, "You know what? It just means that you have to remain quiet for the rest of the time I'm yeah. doing this." He is a, <laughs> okay. He's the biggest manipulator. Like, oh my gosh, this what? guy knows Happy nothing, Father's and he is Day. like, "Well, let yeah. me tell you the definition of this: is to do whatever I fucking say. If it's be quiet, <laughs> then you're quiet. Okay. So when I say this word, quiet, <laughs> like ew. I it means you don't speak. I hate you. These." Poor things. Um, so then Tip finishes the spell, and of course, the sawhorse comes to life. Yeah, it's some of the powder falls off, but he says most of it like soaks into the wood. Sawhorse body horror? Yeah, sawhorse. Just anything soaking in, honestly. Just like his but, body eats it. Yeah, and that, and yeah, it's no longer a sawhorse. It's the sawhorse's body. This yeah. is changing from an inanimate object noun to a proper noun. This is now the sawhorse. Yeah. Uh, and that's how the chapter that's ends. Wild. The chapter ends with Jack Pumpkinhead saying, you are a very clever sorcerer, dear father. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, that concludes chapter four. Tip makes an experiment of magic. And Hannah, what would you call that chapter? Oh, what would I call it? Um, I would call it Tip, you don't know what you're dealing with. Woo! Wow. We need a fanfare effect. <laughs> <laughs> this is my message to Tip, honestly, and I hope he reads it someday. Tip, this is a call to action. Do better. <laughs> Do better. Chapter five. The Awakening of the Sawhorse. So now the sawhorse is alive. He's going wild. Oh, <laughs> honestly, he needs to put him out of his misery oh because my God. he can't. This is like spirit. He can't say, kill me, kill me. <laughs> but he's thinking it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Well, so he's like, look. He doesn't have a mouth. Well, he kind of does, but in the same way that he kind of has eyes. His eyes are just knots in the wood. He They're is. just like nubs. So he's just scrambling in a circle and panicking because he can't see the back of himself. Yeah. Oh, my God. And so while he's spinning around, he I'm knocks. I'm going to cry. It's honestly <laughs> it's awful. It's disgusting. Uh, he knocks Jack over, uh, and then thankfully he didn't get injured. But then he tramples Tip's foot, and he tramples him to death. Wait, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you are not. 
was about to be fucked up. And I was like, forget everything I yeah. just said. That's not fair. And then a little girl crawls out of the wood and she says, hello, my name's Dorothy. And we just pick up from there. <laughs> no. Oh he, my God, that got me. So yeah. honestly, when I was writing my notes, I, I wrote um, that he trampled Tip. And I was going to write, he trampled Tip's foot because that's what actually happens. And then my hands just wrote to death. And I was like, oh, can you imagine? So I went, I just kept it there. But he actually just, he steps on Tip's foot, but he steps hard. And Tip is like, Jesus Christ. Like, whoa. I mean, he's made of pure wood. It yeah. Hurts. Yeah. It's yeah. He's wood. And he also, yeah, it's an inanimate or it's, it's, it is a now animate wooden object. And he was kind of big, right? You said it was like, so he's like a log. He's yeah, probably, it was yeah. like a log. Yeah. It's, it's like a log. log. He's probably like, three feet tall i mean he's Ew. bigger than a dog well he's as big as probably well like as big as a donkey i imagine honestly a donkey that's but made strange. of solid wood my note says tip keeps trying to calm it down but now that it's alive maybe i should say tip keeps trying to calm him down yeah, <laughs> yeah let's but get some jack pronouns says on there. <laughs> jack says that he doesn't think that the sawhorse can hear the command since the sawhorse has no ears i have an important question for jack where are jack's ears <gasps> why does he think that like because okay so then we yeah, go what into, is he thinking we go to this whole thing where tip is yelling and yeah like jack says oh like probably he just doesn't have ears which is just like so stupid but then tip is like oh that makes sense so even they, though jack's a pumpkin yeah and so they tie the sawhorse to a tree and tip is like i'm just gonna whittle down some ears for him which it's like where why didn't jack Pumpkinhead need ears to be whittled is it because yeah. I, I don't know but the at this point though like they, they tried tying him to a tree Maybe because he has a whole head well yeah uh, that's true that does, he doesn't have a no, head you hear he through barely the neck. has eyes he hears through the neck the sawhorse doesn't have a neck <gasps> Ugh, how Ew, awful. It's like gills. But then there... Ew, it is like gills. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's this whole interlude where, like... Tip is explaining how big ears are, and he's like, oh, these are too big. These need to be smaller because they look like horse ears. And he and Jack are having this whole conversation of like, oh, and Jack is like, if I had long ears, would I be a horse? And Tip is like, no, no matter how long your ears are, all you will ever be is a pumpkin man. Okay, <laughs> Tip is just like saying shit. Yeah, he's he saying is. shit. He's getting fed up with this little baby he has to take care of now. It's honestly damaging. Yeah. Um, so they're working on making him ears. Oh, and actually, this is Jack's idea to make him the ears. And Tip asks how he like how he thought of that. And Jack tells him that he didn't need to think of the idea since it was the simplest and easiest thing to do. Okay. We don't <laughs> need that type of attitude in here. We're just trying to make everyone's life a little easier. <laughs> yeah, can we work as a team, please? Like, chill. Um, but So Tip makes the sawhorse some ears out of bark, and Jack helps him fasten them to the sawhorse's head. And Tip announces that the ears make the sawhorse kind of handsome, uh, which terrifies the yeah, sawhorse because he, he just heard his first thing. He yells that into his ear. He's like, er, 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 your ears in. It's very handsome. <laughs> and oh my God. so, yeah, then so he freaks out and he's like, oh, my God, he runs away. He's like he's running. Like, I'm not going to be sexualized. No. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm not handsome. I'm a newborn. <laughs> I'm a child. Knocks, <laughs> he knocks Jack and Tip over and then he's running because he's, he's freaking out. And the sound of his home own footsteps are scaring him yeah then he steps into a gopher hole and falls over onto his back and starts just waving his little yeah, legs they're in the just air. wiggling like he's a turtle or something i just ugh, this is just so upsetting so after a lot of hullabaloo tip helps the sawhorse stand <laughs> okay, up <hullabaloo. laughs> oh, I'm sorry. i just had to point that out <laughs> so what you have a problem with hullabaloo <laughs> Uh, Tip helps the sawhorse back to his feet, um, and he teaches him some simple commands. So he teaches him that woe means stop, get up means go forward, and trot means go as fast as he can. So he fastens Jack on the back of the sawhorse, and they set off on their journey. But importantly, the sawhorse is like, why am I here? And Tip is like, I made you. And you just have to make me happy, so carry Jack around. And he was like, okay, I'm fine with that. I'm very no. new here. He's literally like, well, since you created me, I'll do what you say. Uh, like, I'm scared of everything, so I'll just listen to you. Sorry. We're about to have some sawhorse horror also because Jack is going to ride, but there's nothing to hold on to. And Jack's, like, weak and jointy. So Tip just cuts a limb from a tree, whittles it down into a cruel, sharp point. Then he carves a deep hole into the horse's back. Back and he jams the limb in but 
Then he grabs a rock and starts pounding it in even farther. <laughs> and the horse is like, oh, I don't like that. And he's like, why? And he's like, I don't know. It's just jarring. Like, it's making me, like, vibrate. I don't like it. And Tip is like, well, we're done anyway, so it doesn't matter. So after walking for a while, they found themselves on a wider road made of yellow brick. Heard of it? You yeah. Dig? They're, they're on the yellow brick road. Again, which um, is is just interesting. And after walking down the yellow the road of yellow brick for a little bit, uh, they see a sign on the side of the road that reads Emerald City, nine miles. Wow. So imagine if Dorothy and her friends had seen a sign like that. Yeah. <laughs> or for that matter, if we knew that the land of Oz was on the US measurement system and not on the metric system. Whoa, nine miles? Yeah, nine Isn't nine that interesting? That. Um yeah. and that's what, like twenty seven kilometers? Because we were concerned about that last right. time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, now, now we know exactly how far they are from town. Um, but it's getting late, and Tip lays Jack down, deciding that that's safest. Just lays him down so he doesn't fall over during the night. Uh, And he asks the sawhorse to keep an eye out for anyone that would come and bother them, since the sawhorse doesn't need to sleep. I found it interesting that he points that out because I would presume that Jack also does not need to sleep. So that's also what I thought. But I think that they didn't point it out for Jack because he's already laying down, so it doesn't matter so if he, he needs can't to sleep be on or the not. Lookout. Yeah, but I don't think that Jack slept. I I, I hope. Well, I I wish he could, but I hope he didn't because <laughs> why is the sawhorse such an inferior creature? Is it just because you look like a horse, and so that means that you don't get the full mental like, you know, level of a pumpkin head? I don't know. It's interesting, but that's it's interesting as it is. Yeah. Um, that's the end of that chapter. Yeah, Tip's exhausted and he passes out and yeah. they sleep through the night. They sleep he right should be quick. exhausted, honestly. Well, but that is the end of chapter five, the awakening of the sawhorse. And Blake, what would you call that? Kill me. Oh. Chapter six. Jack Pumpkinhead's ride to the Emerald City. So this is something that we haven't actually talked about in this chapter or this book yet. But in the first book, they always refer to it as the city of emeralds. And in this book, Emerald City. That is so interesting that it's in your notes at this point, because it's also in my notes at this point, even though we've been calling it the Emerald City the entire yeah. time. And they have been, too. Yeah, this um, is when I first realized. But yeah, we're going to learn as we go along that this series is far from perfect and there are a lot of inconsistencies. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this You'll is the first out. one that we've noticed here is that we're no longer calling it the City of Emeralds. It's just the Emerald City, which it's not a huge discrepancy, but it's definitely worth noting. I think it's interesting that we both noted it and just like keep your ears peeled for more of those like things that make you go hmm yeah why'd you do that Um, (laughs) but jack wakes tip up and they resume on their journey uh and tip determines that if there's no mishaps and they're met with no trouble they will make the nine the nine mile walk to the emerald city by noon which makes me wonder how far did they walk yesterday yeah i don't know because they walked from like well it was good evening oh it was the next morning it was a whole day like they must, yeah, they, they must have walked like 20 miles. They walked through the first night and then all the next day. Oh, because he left in the night. You're right. But today they're walking only nine. We and expect. As they take off down the road of yellow brick, Tip notices that the plants on the ground are moving from less of a purple to a lighter lavender color. And then finally they're transitioning into a much more vibrant green as they get closer to the Emerald City. Yeah. So eventually these colors, the blue or the yellow, the red or the purple, it sounds like they just like kind of fade down to a, like a milder color and then they become it's not clear to me because he's referencing the grass specifically i don't know if it's green in the middle because the emerald city is green or if it's green as it gets closer because that's the actual color of grass there's for my view no way to interpret that one way or the other with any degree of certainty so it is what it is they finally come to a point where the road of yellow brick is split in two by a broad river and i just have to ask why does this keep on happening yeah and doesn't that seem familiar yeah, yeah. The tin woodman had to fell a tree across a canal in the middle of the road in order to escape the kalidas and he also had to build a raft for them to cross a raging river which almost cost the scarecrow his life so yeah. why is the road not paved over these things yeah <laughs> i guess it makes you wonder when the road was made because if so much has happened Before in between the river well i mean that's not that uncommon there could be a flood so 
They're at the river, and a ferryman comes across and asks for some money to take them across, which I've never even thought about money in Oz until now. What do you think that's like? Do you think it's coins? Yeah. Is it paper money? Well, because everything was always given to Dorothy yeah. and them. So, like, I don't know. Probably coin. But, yeah, he tells them if they don't have any money, then they can't ride. And they're like, well, what are we supposed to do? And he basically tells Tip to float across the river on his wooden sawhorse and let Jack Pumpkinhead sink or swim for all he cares. Yeah, literally, he's like, hey, if if the Pumpkinhead makes it, fine. If he doesn't, same, same. I don't care at all. And it's like, Jesus Christ. But Tip just does it anyway. He uh, gets on the back of the sawhorse and Jack holds onto the tail. Tip tells the horse that if he wiggles his legs, he'll probably swim. And if he does, they will probably make it to the other side. No fear of death, this kid. I know. Well, he's a child. And he's just like, I just created these two things, so I can basically do anything I want. He didn't create yeah. himself. He's a father of two. Well, we don't know where he came from, do we? I guess True. so. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, what were you going to say, though, Wyatt? Just that this whole interaction with the fairy man, it's just like a throwaway story. Like Absolutely It's just like filler. It's like they didn't have to come to the river. The fairy man, I will tell you right now, has nothing to do with the rest of the book. He doesn't come in later. They're not going back to this river. Like yeah. It's just like, <clears throat> why this? He's you just know? a commentary on how... You can't have things unless you spend money on them, yeah. I guess. I don't Capitalism know. or something. I'd, I wouldn't expect someone to give me a ride without me offering them something in exchange. Yeah, what so, year did uh, this book come out? 1904. Okay. Yeah, so. Um, but Things they, are changing. Luckily, <laughs> they do make it across to the other side in spite of the ferryman. Um, and Tip has the bright idea <laughs> uh, of a way that they can dry off faster. Just run. They're just going to run really fast, and yeah. the sun and the sun and the wind will dry them off. Yeah, so they're just going to run. Which is like probably true. They'll wind. get they'll get chafed. I mean, I don't know. I mean, do they think they're oh. a car wash or something? That the yeah. wind is just going to dry off their sop, <laughs> like his sopping full head to toe outfit. Yeah, and also that's just, true. Is is the sun out? It it's must the middle be... of the day. Okay. Uh, well, it's early what in the morning. Well, it's oh, like, yeah, what oh. season is it? There's is it pumpkins. Warm? There's pumpkins growing, which means it's late summer, early autumn. Uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking about the wood being wet, you know? Like, yeah. Like, if it doesn't have something to actually help it dry. Oh, yeah, it's not coated or It's going to take forever. It's going to get some, like, some rot. Oh, what happens when they start to rot? Ew, this poor thing. Yeah, Jack... His head is a pumpkin full of the guts still. Ew, oh, yeah. So, he's probably full of river water, guts, probably bugs. I don't he's know. Disgusting. Yeah, he's becoming um, his own ecosystem. God, but, his face is like an open wound. Ugh. Ugh, sorry, everyone. So Tip decides that they're going to run like the wind, or as fast as they can, to dry their clothes off. So the sawhorse <laughs> remembered that Trot meant to go as fast as he could. So he takes off at an insane pace, and Tip is running so fast that he can't breathe, so he's not able to call Hannah what is the command for stopping. Hold. Whoa. <laughs> I, th- yeah. I think Hannah said hold. <laughs> and I the- didn't say hold. I didn't say hold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But the horse wouldn't have realized because Blake didn't. So <laughs> <laughs> the sawhorse's dead branch of a tail snaps off and it sends Tip rolling into the dirt. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, Jack. And the horse have no idea. They don't know they're alone now. Yeah. Tip is like way in the back and he's like finally catches his breath. And he's like, whoa. And he's telling him to stop. They're way too far away. And they're speeding. And Tip, or not Tip, Jack is just like not looking around. He's just like, oh, I'm chilling. We're just running. This is just what it is. And they just keep going. Yeah. It's kind of fucked up. Like it says, like the book says that Jack doesn't know that Tip left because he didn't turn around and the sawhorse didn't know the tip was gone because he was incapable of turning around yeah um but tip keeps walking because he knows that the yellow brick road will end at the emerald city and that he can just meet jack and the sawhorse there because once they get to the wall they're not going to know what to do so meanwhile the sawhorse and jack they just keep going and going not even realizing that tip has fallen off and uh, they're riding along, and Jack notices that the grass and trees have become bright emerald in color, so they must be nearing the Emerald City. Now, something that I think we forgot to mention before, but when they're talking about how everything around them is purple, Jack is like, oh, it is? And Tip's like, yeah, can't you see? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I must be colorblind. But now Jack is realizing that everything is emerald, so he's and not also, colorblind I'm anymore. I'm just confused because wasn't... 
everything not actually green in the Emerald City. People just wore glasses. So we're still outside of the city yeah. right now. So uh, they're just in the land, uh, like that part of the land where I guess, yeah, everything is green. And this, I guess this answers my question earlier. Everything is green. So Because if you think about it, when Dorothy and her friends approached the city, the wall and the spires were all clearly green. Okay. The guy who greeted them at the gate was wearing all green. That's so true. everything that they saw entering the city was actually green. And then once they were inside, everything was white. A uh, good question. Okay. But Jack and the horse are, yeah, going a thousand miles an hour. The wall is right there. And Jack is like, oh shit, we're going to crash from that wall and literally die. And it even says in the book, if they'd hit that wall, Jack's pumpkin head would have been destroyed and he would have been dead. Oh my God, because it's so soft because it's rotting. Probably. (laughs) It's it's probably super (laughs) spongy. Uh, But so at that point, Jack remembers his yell, whoa. So he's like, whoa. And then they stop. And he would have fallen off, but he was holding on to his carousel yeah hole. when he calls um, whoa the sawhorse stops so immediately that like he kind of goes flying but he's holding on to the carousel yeah thing. um and then he, at that point he looks around well, he, well he's like that was an extremely fast ride father yes, that was a fast <laughs> ride dear father yeah and <laughs> then he looks around and he's like there's no tip and he's like why isn't he here and at first he's kind of like sad and then I don't even know actually well, it how just, it transitions like, makes there. him uneasy because he's never experienced oh like that being sort alone of, like, ne- ne- being... negligence or absence before. Oh yeah. So it makes him like really uneasy and he's like trying to formulate a plan of what to do next. As he's doing that, the gates roll open. Yeah. And the guardian of the gate appears wearing a big green robe and this pointing green hat and when I read this part I was just thinking this is luxury. He's coming out with a velour green robe <laughs> and his big pointy hat. I imagine it being small and not offensive, just like a normal pointy hat. Uh, and I don't know. It sounds to me like a good day at Zara. <laughs> yeah, but the guardian of the gates, you might remember him from last time. He steps out and asks Jack to state his name and his business. And he tells him his name is Jack Pumpkinhead, but he doesn't know what his business is. Uh, he's like, my father would know, but he's not here Ugh. um and then the guardian starts He's asking like so confused really super personal questions like are you a man or a pumpkin and is that horse alive yeah. it's none of your business it's not <laughs> it really is but he does like basically he's like asking these questions and he's like you know what come on in we'll try and help you out like mm-hmm. it's fine like just come on into my my room so they enter and he calls a soldier in and the soldier comes in wearing all green. He has a his whiskers, which I assume means mustache and beard, but he's described as his whiskers. Um, reach very long. They reach all the way down to his knees, and they're also green. Um, and he's also holding a very long green gun. <gasps> Oh my yeah. God. So they have firearms in Oz. A cab, a cab. Which <laughs> <laughs> they have a bunch of guns in Oz, which is sort of a surprise um, because my thinking is do they not have a sniper rifle for when the Wicked Witch was on, you know, the loose yeah, flying right. about? Everyone was so like, helpless against her. I'm just saying, a yeah, standing right. army. Shoot a bitch down. Not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, but we don't know, though. He basically explains what's going on to the soldier and asks what they should do with Jack. And the soldier's like, well, I'll take him to see the great scarecrow. And um, the guardian's like, are you sure? Like, does the scarecrow have time for him? And the soldier's like, I've got better things to do than to deal with this guy. I've got my own troubles. Troubles outside of the palace or the scarecrow's trouble. Yeah. And it's funny because like in this moment, my note is like, he also complains about how he has so many problems. It's like, we all got our dude, problems. Bitch. Chill out. You you decided to be a soldier. I assume maybe he's a conscript. I don't know the history, okay. but like, you know, either way he's being like, he's clearly in charge and he's making a decision. So it's like, you don't have to be here. Your problems are your own, you know, mm-hmm. but he is being nice. He's taking them to the scarecrow. So that's great for them. Okay. I guess for what reason? I don't know. So the sawhorse and Jack are outfitted with green spectacles, which is a whole thing, as I'm sure you can imagine. They have yeah. weird shaped heads and faces. Okay, yeah. yeah. Jack They're has like, gigantic well, eyes. They tie them custom. on. Yes. Custom, <laughs> custom fabrication. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, but they're they, just like, oh, it's just the fashion of the people. Your eyes will be blinded. And they're like, we don't want to be blind. So they put them on. And they enter the Emerald City and everyone's like kind of staring at them because they're like, wow, never seen anything like that before. (laughs) Except for like whenever a little girl and a scarecrow and a tin woodman and a lion walked through, that was probably pretty fucking bizarre. Am I I wrong? Yeah, it makes you wonder. I mean, Um, at least all the, well, I don't know. I was going to say all those things existed in Oz, but they didn't know that. Yeah, how many like different... 
things or people travel through Oz. Like, in the next I would 12 say- books, I'll tell you, there are going to be so many that it will make it strange that they're surprised at yeah, Pumpkinhead. You're exactly, right. Because yeah. it's like, what happened before then? What if the yeah. little China people came through? Chi- little China. Beauti- <laughs> they're made of China. <laughs> the listen, <porcelain> dolls. <laughs> listen to the previous episodes. <laughs> you understand. Um, so, but as you know, everything in the Emerald City is opulent. You own everything. They do. Um, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's adorned with magnificent emeralds and jewels, but knowing nothing of wealth, the Sawhorse and Jack Pumpkinhead don't even notice any of it. Yeah. They just follow the soldier silently to they the Emerald care. Palace. They're just like, we don't even know what this is. And it's at, just a, a place. At one point, a small green dog comes and starts yipping at the Sawhorse's feet, and he just kicks him and sends him flying and howling. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what happened to that dog after that. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! They get to the Emerald Palace, and Jack wants to ride the sawhorse into the palace to meet the scarecrow. But they make the sawhorse go to the stables because he's a horse. I don't know why Jack tried that because he doesn't know anything. Well, yeah, it. he like he doesn't know he should be embarrassed. Like he, the way it's in the book is like he doesn't have a concept of being embarrassed. Like he doesn't have a. And context. he's met like two people <clears throat> in yes, his entire life. He, now he's walking through a whole city. He's not even. With he's heat. not even nervous to meet the scarecrow because this is someone who he's heard about while going. Going for a walk yeah. yeah but then he enters the palace and sees his majesty the scarecrow seated on his throne and he stops in absolute amazement oh my now, god i just need to say just one quick thing before he goes into the throne room they take jack into the waiting room and i thought it was so interesting it says but the scarecrow at the time was bored and in want of something to do. So he ordered his guards to have Jack Pumpkinhead brought to his throne room at once. And I'm like, what was he doing? He was just sitting there bored. He's got a brain now. Do a Sudoku. Yeah, and also, does he still have the pins and needles in his head? Yes, well, he that's sure why he's smart. Uh, how long yeah. have they been there? Are they rusty? Has <gasps> it rained? He's probably well protected. I have no concept point. of how long it's been. What I do know is that Tip is a young man who knows all of the lore of Dorothy and her friends. So yeah. it's got to be some time. It's been, so- I guess, when the Wicked Witch died, that's like global news for Oz. So no. that information, along with all of their information, probably circled pretty quick. If yeah. they didn't kill two famous maybe evil a couple witches, years. I would say like a few months, honestly. Oh, like okay. imagine. Mm, I guess it's difficult today because of you telecommunications. Think, you think it's only a few months after the last book? Yeah. Oh. I imagine being like between four and six months. I think it's been several years. Really? I was yeah. thinking two or three. I don't know why, but I think it's been. I think it's been multiple years. In future books, I'll be interested to see how that timeline plays out with what yeah. we see. Yeah. I mean, even in this book, we'll get a feel for how long it's been since people have seen each other. So yeah. We'll, yeah, it's true. Uh, we'll continue that next week because that was the last chapter for yeah, today. That's just it. It hey. just ends. We don't know what was amazing. But <laughs> the name of that chapter was Chapter 6, Jack Pumpkinhead's Ride to the Emerald City. And Blake, what would you call that? He's ignorant. Because Jack Pumpkinhead doesn't, he's ignorant to the fact that he should be embarrassed to be meeting royalty. I thought Mm -hmm. you said he's eating it. No. He's ignorant. But he also ate. He did. But he did eat that. (laughs) He definitely ate that. Yes, queen. Slay. Well, Hannah, I have an ethics question for you really quick, in which I think I might know your answer. Do you think that it's ethical to give the sawhorse life just to use him to carry Jack around? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> actually, not I'm actually extremely upset with Tip right now with his yes. uh, behavior towards just inanimate objects and creating life and uh, <laughs> then just expecting things, you know? Hannah, do you think the powder of life is the same thing that was used to make the scarecrow? And specifically, what I'd like to reference is that when we meet the scarecrow, he says that he couldn't see until his eyes were painted and he couldn't hear until his ears were painted so similar to the sawhorse who couldn't hear until he had ears added to him do you think that seems like it might be the same way the scarecrow was made yes that is it seems really similar are you more excited to move forward with this story or is it weird starting a new story after falling in love with the previous one like i think i'm more excited because knowing like watching the movie and knowing that story like I'm ready for some new content. I'm ready to hear a new story. I'm ready to meet new people. I'm already excited, like, and a little scared. I'm a little scared. <laughs> yes. Um, 
but overall like i'm i don't i don't mind that feeling i'm excited for it ah. well we look forward to continuing the adventure with you yes. we'll see you guys next week thank you for listening to episode five the first of book two the marvelous land of oz next week we'll pick up with chapter seven his majesty the scarecrow oz hour Created and hosted by Blake Stone and Wyatt Swingham. Co-hosted by Hannah Aguirre. Audio production by Charlie Johnson. Theme music written and performed by Rudy Klobus. Cover art by Valentin Lucas. Okay, so the book starts with Dorothy in this dreary, sad little town that's very very gray and very dull and all of a sudden a cyclone right a cyclone i think that's what they're called and it takes up the whole farm and the house blows away and little fucking toto decides to fucking run out and dorothy gets taken with the house and and then we meet the witch and we kill a witch and then we meet all these little people and then we follow the yellow brick road and when we're doing that we also run into the scarecrow who is two days old or three i can't remember anyway uh the tin man is next i think and he's rusty and he was in love but now he's you know all rusted and so they fix him up take him along with them then they meet this cowardly little lion and take them with him to oh my god <laughs> and and <laughs> who else do they meet i don't know but they go to the castle i'm just gonna say we're going to the castle now we're at oz and the the people with the green glasses are there and then the the oz tells him oh you need to go kill this witch now because you didn't you didn't kill enough of the witches yet and so they're like oh great so they have to go go they go over there and then they do that first they're taken captive and a lot of other things happen too but i can't get into it right now and um <laughs> She throws mop water on her and she's like, I'm melting, I'm melting. And then uh, then they decide to go back and then he tries to make this whole balloon for her and make other things for her friends that they wanted to. Can't get into that right now either. And then um, he says he flies away in the balloon because of Toto fucking again. And then they meet the other witch, I think Glenda or someone else who is a, a witch and she told her like oh your slippers just click those and you'll be home and then she was home and then they built a whole new city basically a farm and now that's where she where she lives and everything's ha ha yeah that's it i'm done <laughs>